Hello there, I'm Corel Painter Master Aaron Rutten, and in this episode of my Digital Artist Vlog, I'm going to give you some advice about building a website for your artwork. So here's an example of my website, AaronRutten.com. This is all custom built from scratch using Adobe Muse. So what can you do with a website? Well, obviously you can put up your artwork into art galleries if you like. You can list your services, like I do graphic design and illustration, I teach digital art lessons, I have all that listed. You can have an online booking system where somebody can book a lesson. This is just a form that I built with JotForm and then I pasted the code into the website. You can have testimonials from your students or your clients. And of course you can sell your artwork. You can publish the artwork on your website or you can do what I did here and just add an Etsy widget. And anytime I add something to Etsy, it gets automatically placed into here. You can also put up videos. I have a whole bunch of video tutorials here and I have downloads if you want people to be able to download files. And then I have some contact info like my artist biography. If you want to read a little bit about me, you can put in links and these little buttons for following and liking. Now, Adobe Muse is basically an application that lets you design a website visually without having to know any code at all. And I used to build my website with Adobe Dreamweaver, which was all code based and you had to know how to code and it was a real, real pain to use. I don't like using CSS for everything. I'd rather just build things visually. So typically what I was doing was making it visually in Photoshop and then cutting it up into slices and putting it into Dreamweaver and then putting it up on my website. But now with Adobe Muse, it's a million times easier. Now, people will argue and say that it's not worth using Adobe Muse because the code that it gives you is pretty much crap from a code point of view. But you know what? I personally don't want to have to code things. I'm done doing that. That's not what I want to do. I'm an artist, not a coder. So I could care less what the code looks like when it spits it out, because as long as it looks good on my website, that's all I care about. And you can see here, everything looks pretty good. It's all the way I intended it. Some things might change a little bit and there might be a couple of limitations, but for the most part, you can do pretty much anything with Adobe Muse. Now, what are some of your other options? There is WordPress, which is really popular. WordPress is kind of like a cookie cutter website building program, which is how I would refer to it, because basically you'll have a couple of different areas where you can put things and not much more flexibility beyond that. So maybe you can have your text at the top or maybe you can have your text at the left or the right or center. And same thing with your images. There's a finite number of combinations that you can use and a finite number of tools that you can implement to build your website, which is fine for most people. And most people don't want to have to hassle with having too many options for building their website. So a lot of people use WordPress. It's really popular. And there's also Squarespace, which is a similar website. Again, a cookie cutter type website where you have specific templates and specific layouts that you can use and you can put an image in the center or on the left or on the right, but you can't say put an image exactly here or exactly there or, you know, have complete control over your website. I don't like the cookie cutter websites because I like to have a little more control. So if we jump over to Muse, I'll give you a little overview of how this works here. So what you're seeing when you open Muse is an overview of your site. So this is kind of like your site plan. These are all of the pages on my website. I have my home page. I have my art gallery pages for each different gallery category. If I move over here, I have my digital painting tutorials in all of their categories. So there's this big map with kind of a hierarchy. And then down here we have the master pages. Master pages allow you to build content on a master page and then that content will show up on all the pages on your website, depending on which master you've set them to. So for example, my navigation is going to appear on all the pages. So I put that on the master page. That way, if I make a change to my navigation, it applies automatically to every single page that's using that master. Before, when I had to do this in Adobe Dreamweaver, if I made a change to the navigation, I'd have to copy and paste that change to each page. You can see how insane that would be if you had a lot of pages. And I know there's faster ways to do it with CSS, but again, I'm not a coder, I'm an artist. So I don't want to spend a lot of time learning how to code. I just want to be able to just do it visually because that's what I'm good at. So let's take a look at one of these galleries. Let's look at my draw this gallery here. Now it's going to look a little funny because it's showing you all the components of this gallery, but 
it's not actually going to look like that on the website. If we want to preview how it'll look on the web, we'll go to File, Preview Page and Browser. So this is how it'll look when it's online. You can see I can click on the image gallery and try another image here. We can even scroll through it. And I built all this stuff so I can decide how big I want the image, where I want the image placed. I can give the image a title. I can change the color of the font. I can change these buttons. I can change these numbers. I mean, really, you can do almost anything with Adobe Muse, and that's what I like about it. And one of the best things about it is you can paste in code if you want to. So you can get little widgets from websites, which are little snippets of codes, which I used here for this search bar. If I want to do a search for tutorials, on my website, I have this little widget. It's just a little piece of code that I pasted in, and now people can search on my website for particular search topics. So if I go to that master page that has that search widget, you can see it's not showing up as anything. It just says embedded HTML. If I right click on that and go to edit HTML, this is just one little piece of code that I got from the website, pasted it in. I don't have to change anything or do anything. If I want to change this widget, I'll just go to the website and make the changes there, and that's super easy and I have an instant search feature. I didn't have to go in and code anything manually or do anything complicated. I just pasted in that one little widget. If we jump over to this page here that I have for my landscape painting crash course, you can see if I pan down, I have a couple of things embedded here. I have a widget for a YouTube video. And again, I just got that code from YouTube and just pasted it in. If you want to, you can change the dimensions for that video if you want it to be bigger or smaller here. That's super easy to change. And then I have another widget here, which is for people to enter their email address if they want to subscribe to my mailing list. And if we preview this in the browser, you can see what it'll look like. There's a place to enter your email and subscribe. You can play the video right from within your browser. And that's pretty cool. I have this Etsy widget embedded. So all I have to do is update my listings on Etsy and they automatically get added to my website. So I don't have to change any of this whole area here on my website. I just go to my Etsy page and if I add an item, it automatically gets plopped into here. And that's a huge advantage because these widgets take a lot of work out of updating your website. Once the widget's in there, that whole widget's gonna update on its own. So for example, if I go back to my main page here with this Twitter feed, if I wanna just have some really, really quick update to my website and say one little thing like, I'm doing an art show here or I'm live on Twitch or something, I can just tweet that on Twitter and it's going to get added to my front page automatically without me having to go in and go into Muse and change anything. It's just automatically done. I have a really cool slideshow, which is super easy to make. I also have an animated GIF banner, which I made in Photoshop and pasted in. I have this banner with my logo that I made in Photoshop. I have some basic text. I have some images that I made in Photoshop. You can make rollover images. Now, if we want to make a change to the text, Let's say I did a typo or something in here. I want to add an objective. It's really easy. This is just a text box like you'd have in Word or any other program. And you could type in a new objective. If it's not formatted right, you can select it and you can make it unbold. You can make it a bullet. You can change the type of bullet to a dash if you want. And you can have a list and so on. You can even change the color very easily if you want it to be a really ugly yellow color like this, you can do that. You can change the font. If you want, you can use standard web fonts, which are kind of limited, or you can use a system font. And in that case, it'll convert it into an image for you automatically. And there's also a tool to draw rectangles. So you could really do your whole layout for your website entirely in Muse if you wanted to. There's also layers, so I can group things and I can stack things in layers. So for instance, I could go to the background here and I could draw in a rectangle for the background here. And maybe we'll make it gray so that we can see it. And then if you wanted to center that background, you can also go to align and you can align to a selection or to the content area. And you can center it so that will make this rectangle perfectly centered on the web page. I can adjust the bottom of it a little bit. And you can see that the footer, which is the bottom of the website, can also be adjusted and will automatically expand if you move something down that encroaches on it. So basically, if you add more content to your website, your footer or your bottom of your website is going to automatically move down. So now if we preview this in browser, we'll see what that change looks like. If we scroll down, you can see it was really easy to add in that background. You can also round the edges of rectangles 
really easily. I can set this to like 12 and you can see that I have nice rounded edges. You don't have to use flat fills. You can also use gradient fills. There's also strokes if you want to add a line to one of your boxes. Here's the slideshow. I can go into the slideshow and if I want to add images to it, I can just click here and I can go to add images. And if I want to add a couple images, I can select the two or three images that I want to add. Just click on open and they're automatically added to that gallery. I don't have to do anything other than that. If I want to remove images, I can go through and pick those specific images that I don't want anymore and I can just delete them. Now I'll jump back over to the master and we'll take a look at editing the menus. The menus are super easy to edit. If you want to change the name or you want to add another tab or you want to add a side tab here, it's all very easy to do. If we jump back over to the live version of my website, we can see how that menu works. And you can even do some cool layering things like I have this whole top area kind of pinned down and it's covering everything else. So if I scroll down, you can see it stays in place and it covers everything as I scroll. And that gives you some really cool effects. And then when it comes time to publish these changes to the website, that's really easy. You just go to File, Export as HTML, and you just export them to the folder where you have everything saved. And then you go to that folder, that'll have all of the files automatically generated for you and everything will be all linked and categorized and put in folders. Then you just select all of that stuff and you drag it over to your website through an FTP application. I like this FileZilla FTP, it's free. And if you put in the information for your website, like the FTP host and the username and the password, then you can get this folder here, which is basically just your website, just one folder. If you just drag and drop those files into this main folder, it's going to basically add them to your website. Now, it's going to ask you if you want to overwrite certain files. I basically have this set automatically to overwrite any files if they're newer. So you can find that in settings. And then if you look under file exists action, you can say uploads, overwrite file of source newer. So basically if I've changed anything on my website, that file that I have on my computer is always going to be newer than the old file that's on my website. So all I have to do is just copy that over and it's only going to replace the files that have been changed. So within really like a couple minutes, I can update my website. So it's just as fast as using WordPress or Squarespace, but I have a lot more control. You don't have this much control with Squarespace or WordPress. So I recommend that if you're leaning towards the tech savvy side and you're good at using Photoshop and layout programs and things like that, and you don't mind a little bit of a learning curve, I would go with Adobe Muse. If you want something really, really, really simple that you don't have to mess with at all and you want far fewer options, then I would go with WordPress or Squarespace for building a website. So I hope that clarifies how to build a website for artwork. If you found this information helpful, take a quick second to like this video and share it with your friends. And if you're new to my channel, click that subscribe button to get free updates when I release new videos. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.